Hi there. Um, welcome to St. Saviour's Anglican Church to our uh, online service. This is the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time, the 31st of October 2021. Uh, thank you for joining us. I hope uh, you enjoy today's service. Shall we begin? Grace and peace to you from God. God fill you with truth and joy. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray the collect together, the prayer for today. Almighty God, your saints join with you in the eternal song of praise and forever reflect your glory. May our lives be worthy of those who have gone before us, full of faith, courage and holiness, singing your song to a troubled world. Through Jesus Christ, our liberator, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now for today's Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, beginning at chapter 11, verse 32. Praise and glory to God. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. There was a cave and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the Word. Today's story is all about the ways in which Jesus surprises people and overturns their expectations. When Jesus got the message from the two sisters, he stayed where he was for two days. He just stayed there. He didn't prepare to go. He didn't send a message ahead saying that he was on his way. He just stayed put. He just stayed there. So why? And what was Jesus doing? Well, we discover that he was praying. Yes, he was praying uh, for Lazarus, but he was also praying for wisdom and discernment and guidance as to uh, what his own plan should be and what his movements should be. And the reason for that is that what Jesus was about to do for Lazarus would be on the one hand, the principal reason for why the authorities would want to get rid of him, would want him out of the way. And on the other hand, it would be the most powerful sign yet of what Jesus' life and work was all about. The power of resurrection. Now Martha knows that if Jesus had been there, he would have cured Lazarus if he'd been there. But instead of looking to the past and dreaming of what might have been, 
Jesus invites Martha to look at the future. Then having looked to the future, he asks her to imagine that future is suddenly brought forwards into the present. Jesus points to the future and saying, your brother will rise again. She knows as well as Jesus does that this is standard Jewish teaching, that they shared a vision of new heavens and a new earth, a world a little bit like ours, but with its beauty um, greatly enhanced and its pain and ugliness and suffering and grief completely abolished. And within that uh, new world, they believe that all God's people from ancient times to the present will be given new bodies to share, to enjoy, to relish uh, the life of this new creation. Now, Martha believes this, but she isn't prepared for Jesus's response. With the resurrection of Lazarus in today's story, we see the future bursting into the present. The new creation, and with it the resurrection, has come forward from the end of time into the middle of time. The fullness of resurrection glory is witnessed in and through the resurrection of Jesus after his crucifixion. So resurrection isn't just a teaching. It isn't just a, a future fact. It's a person that's standing right in front of Martha, inviting her, teasing her to take that huge leap, that huge jump of faith, to take that, that huge jump of trust and hope. In the power of resurrection lives hope for all of us. If we ask, if we ask, Jesus will meet our problems with some new part of God's future. And that can and will, if we ask, burst into our, to your present time. Um, the power of resurrection, if we ask, will burst into the mess and the grief uh, and the suffering um, Whatever it is that we're going through in, in dark times, whatever troubles us, if we ask, the power of resurrection and the hope of a new creation and new life will make its way into our lives with good news, with hope, and with greater and with new possibilities. The power of resurrection is our hope. At the beginning uh, of today's uh, scripture, we find Jesus bursting into tears. Now, this is the only place in the Gospels where we, we witness um, Jesus being so upset that he cries. And it, it's kind of remarkable, really. Now, Jesus doesn't um, come along with a magic wand. He doesn't sweep into the scene and declare that tears are beside the point. There's no sense of triumphalism here when he enters the scene. There's, there's no sense of someone coming along with a secret formula that, that shows how clever he is. No, there isn't. Rather, there is a man acquainted with our grief, acquainted with our pain and with our suffering and sharing it, sharing our grief and pain to the point of tears. He is with us in our grief. This passage points us forward to the questions that will be asked at Jesus' own death. Couldn't the man who did so many signs have brought it about that he himself didn't have to die? The writer of the Gospel, John, hints at the answer that it's only through Jesus' death, it's only through his own sharing of the common fate of humanity, that the world can be saved. Come to me, we say to Jesus. Come and see my heart. Come and see the shape of my life. Come and see, we say to Jesus, as we lead him into our deepest, darkest self, to our secret desires, to our deepest grief and to our deepest sorrow. Come and see, we say to Jesus. And Jesus says, Come and see, he says to us in reply. Come and see, as he leads us, as he walks with us through our sorrow, through our grief, to the place 
where he now dwells in light and love and the power of resurrection and glory. A new day can dawn in our lives, in your life. The, no the dawn of a new day is just around the corner. All it takes is for you to ask. And though where we live, if we ask, although where we live, the night can be long, the night can be dark, and the tears of, that we cry can be very bitter, there is hope in and through the power of resurrection. In and through the power of resurrection, there is light, there is joy, waiting not far away for you. So invite Jesus in to those places where you need him to be. Invite him in. Come and see Jesus. Come be with me. Come and see the shape of my life. And as you do that, he will enter into your life, walk you through the pain, the grief and the sorrow and the despair and the loneliness and the disappointment the anger and the frustration. He will walk with you through that and take you into a place of light, of new life, new possibilities of love and a new creation. Amen. E tikanga whakapono. Ko koe te atua tapu te Tino atua No te mana te hi Te we hi No te ao te maori Te ora no te katoa i te rangi i te whenua ko koe tanu. Te atua. Ko koe te maramatanga. O te ao. I te ahora koe i roto i. Te pori, ki a puta ke tau tamako, i hu karaiti, hei pou toko manua mō te ao ko koe tonu. Te atua, ko koe te he, Tapu ko koe tahaku rakaho ko koe tahaku toko toko ko koe takoranga. God of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, you promise to hear us when we pray to you in faith with thanksgiving. We pray for one another, for our families and friends, through whom we learn to love and to be loved. Thank you for all who care for us. Give us grace to serve Christ by serving our neighbours and our community, loving others as he loves us.
We thank you for the unfailing love you hold out to everyone in Jesus Christ. Comfort and heal those in sorrow, need, sickness or any other trouble. Give them courage and hope in their distress and bless those who minister to them. We remember with gratitude your many gifts to us in creation and the rich heritage of these islands. Help us and people everywhere to share with justice and peace the resources of the earth. Give wisdom to those in authority among us and to all leaders of the nations. We pray for your church throughout the world, thanking you for all who serve Christ and his kingdom. By your spirit, strengthen your people for their work and witness in the world. Unite us in your truth and love, that we who confess your name may also reflect your glory. We remember with thanksgiving all who have died in Christ. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may enter with them into the unending joy of your heavenly kingdom. Merciful God, you look with compassion on all who turn to you. Hear the prayers of your people, we pray. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. E te karaiti ta hongi a mātou, e hoa ta hongi a mātou. E tō mātou matu i te rangi, ki a tapu tau ingoa, ki a tai mai tau rangatiratanga, ki a mea tia tau e pai ai ki runga ki te penua, ki a rite anō ki tō te rangi, o mai ki a mātou ai anei he taro mā mātou mō tēnei rā. Muro mātou hara, me mātou hoki e muru nei o te hongi e hara ana ki a mātou. Au hoki mātou e kāwia ka whakawaia, e ngari whakorangi a mātou i te kino. Nau hoki tarangatiratanga te kaha me te kororia. Ake, ake, ake. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father. Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon you this day and evermore. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Kia tau, kia tato kato, te atafai o to tato ariki a iukraiti, me te aroha o te atu, me te whiwhinga tahi tanga ki te wairuatapu, Ake, ake, ake. Amen.